My name is Glenn and I'm a cinematographer DP. Today I'm gonna show you guys how I lit and filmed this scene. Ready? Let's check it out. to get the idea that you might not ever agree to meet me. Um, yeah, this is very new to me. I haven't met anyone online before. Hold on, I just gotta... Uh... I just wanna remember this moment. Is that okay? Okay. Awesome. Well, you look beautiful. Thank you. You ready to go? Yeah, I just can't be out too late. Um, I don't want my mom to find out. She, she probably won't notice anyway, though. Okay, let's go. Thank you. For me, it usually starts with a location scout. Whenever possible, it's always important for me to do a location scout. This allows me to find my proper camera angles, lighting placement, and lens choices. But most importantly, it helps me to know what challenges that I may be facing on the shoot day or things that I may even be able to use to my advantage. This helps me to not waste time on the day of shooting. It keeps people from standing around waiting on me while I try to figure things out and just overall helps me to get a much better result because I'm prepared for that day. Now, I know that it's not always possible to do a location scout. You don't always get paid for it. Sometimes it's just show up and shoot. That's how it works. But let me know down in the comment section if you guys try to do location scouts. If How do you handle the situation? What's your favorite practice during your location scouts? But let's take this scene for example. Once I did my location scout, I knew a few things. I knew that I would be shooting in this direction because in the opposite direction was a very busy street with lots of traffic. And of course, on the day that we were filming, people decided to race. But I didn't want to show the traffic in the shot to avoid distraction and because I was going for a more secluded feel. Now, to my advantage, I knew that I had some really cool exterior lights to use as practicals, as well as some leading lines to help direct the viewer's attention. Now, for lighting, I always try to light for the wide shot. That way you can just tweak things as you come in and for your close shots, you usually just have to, to make minor adjustments to get a, a proper shot. Now, if this is more difficult because it's harder to hide stands and things like that when you're showing so much of the scene, but when you're able to achieve it, then it usually just helps things flow much smoother after the fact. But for my key light, I used an Aperture Amaran F22X with the softbox, and this light was set to 100% at 2500 Kelvin to match the practicals on the wall. This light was placed upstage, just around the corner of the building, just out of frame, and then boomed out to make it look like the light was coming from either another light on the building or just a street light. Then for the fill light, I used another Aperture Amaran F22X, and this was set to 5600 Kelvin at about 30%. This helped to uh, not only lift the shadows, but also add some color contrast and some cool tones to the shadows just to help keep things interesting. Now upstage on the key light side, I had a small 60 watt light 
I think this was like just a Godox light with the reflector dish on it. And this was pointing into the trees, lifting up the shadows in the trees, creating some depth in the background. It was also set to 5600, so this helped to um, just add that cool tone to it as well. I had another one of these lights on the fill side, also facing into the trees for one of the over the shoulder shots. Again, creating depth and that color contrast. Now for the wide shot, I filmed it using the Pocket 6K Pro on a dolly with the Irix 15mm wide open at T2.6. You guys can check out the video for my Pocket 6K Pro rig build. I encourage you to do that. I've got a lot of positive feedback on it. A lot of people have gone out and purchased the same exact setup because of how versatile it is. But um, I did put the Pocket 6K Pro on a dolly and this is where, especially for my establishing shot, the leading lines really came into play because I was able to slide into those leading lines and have kind of a converging line effect that helps draw the attention to the actress as she stepped out on set and just really point the, the viewer's attention to where I wanted it to go. Now, as I pushed in for the over the shoulder shots, when I did the female looking back at the male, I did the Pocket 6K Pro with the 30 mm irix lens also at t2.6 this is one of my favorite lenses i really enjoy the way this lens looks the fall off of the focus is really smooth and just looks really good but i used my smooth camera gear tripod which i've had for a few years that's a rock solid system um, you guys can check out my review video on that as well but i just uh, had it on a set of sticks looking back at the male actor and this is where that fill light going into the trees really helped to add that depth and had that add that texture and color contrast to the scene now for the male actors over the shoulder looking back at the female this is where i put the pocket 6k same lens back on the uh, dolly system so the 30 millimeter irix lens and this helped me for several things for one it gave me the over the shoulder but then it also gave me the ability to be able to track him and kind of push in a little bit as he walked up to the female actor from actress from the vehicle and then it also helped me to track them both as they went back to uh, help her get into the vehicle and really just helped add some interest to the shot Now, this is pretty much it for my breakdown. If you guys enjoy this sort of video, let me know. I can gladly do more of these. I will probably be breaking down the rest of the scenes for my short film, uh, Swept Away, which is right there. You guys can check that out on my channel as well. But that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I'd be glad to uh, hear from you. Other than that, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.